you the touchstone. If you're interested in learning a little bit more about the rover here in the center of the room, I'd be happy to tell you a bit about it. Just don't, we ask you don't touch it. Um, no worries, it happens. But uh, if you're interested, again, I'll tell you a bit about it. This is a one-to-one -one replica of the Mars Opportunity Rover. It's one of five rovers that the United States has landed on the surface of Mars since 1997. Opportunity was the third of those five. Launched in 2003, made the six and a half month journey to Mars, and landed in early 2004. You might be wondering, why are we showing you the third one? You know, why not the first one? Or even the most recent one? Those seem like better options. Nobody cares about the middle child of rovers. I can say that, I'm the middle child. However, Opportunity here is the most successful one. When it first launched, the scientists at NASA, who are some of the smartest people in the entire world, thought it would only last for about 90 days, three months or so. Opportunity didn't really like that, felt a little disrespected. Decided to last for more than 14 years. 57 times longer than they initially anticipated. And during those 14 years, it made a number of landmark discoveries, including the fact that Mars, which you see today, very dry and sandy, was actually once a wet planet. And if water existed there in the past, that means it could exist there in the future as well. Giving hope to the idea of sustainable life on Mars. Unfortunately, Opportunity was disabled and she commissioned in 2018 after a massive sandstorm cut off its power source. But all hope is not lost for the future of Mars' exploration. The United States does still have two active rovers on Mars. Curiosity landed about a decade ago, and Perseverance landed earlier this year. We see the net photo on the wall to my left. If you have any questions about the rover, lunar touchstone, or really anything here at USA Pavilion, please feel free to ask. If not, I recommend checking out our uh, SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket right through the double doors. Looks beautiful at night. Also, you can get your passport stamped outside, which I know a lot of you care about. Yeah? What was your question, by the way? How do you get to the moon rock? You walk right around here. How did it come here? So in 1972, the United States sent you, you don't understand? 1972, way back in the day, many, many years ago, 49 years ago, the United States landed people on the moon for the well, most recent time. They brought a bunch of rocks back. They picked them up, they put it in their pocket, they got back on their rocket ship, and they came home. And that is a piece of one of those rocks. So humans, just like all of us, actually brought that rock home. Was it right? So <laughs> there's a number of reasons why I didn't like it. Uh, much of what you see on the moon, where it's very light, light colored, is actually just a reflection of the sun. It's not actually as light as it looks. Uh, also, some of that lightness or grayness that you might see is crystallization of the rock. And that rock, because it's actually the center of a larger rock, does not have that crystallization. It is in its truest form and its truest color. Okay, it's on the center of the on this end? Oh, on the sun? <laughs> they would not be able to tell you about it because they would burn up. <laughs> not be coming home anytime soon. <laughs> if you want, if you take one thing away from this experience here, don't go and walk on the sun. <laughs> that would not end well. Hey man, you can live your dreams. I do not recommend it though. First man to walk on the sun, right? We're witnessing history, folks. Well, if you could bring back some sun barbecue, I'd love to taste that or uh, see how it tastes. So. You're gonna need some really strong armor, I can tell you that one. How much of you would do? I would make it to Blender. Thanks for visiting, buddy. Thank you.